wagon pulls up, stops, the men get out, and Spence cleans out the hole with a shovel while Junior brings a post from the truck bed. In a matter of three minutes, the repair is underway. Most fence trouble is caused by loose posts, so Junior tamps the dirt in solid. And Spence finally gets around to stapling the wires. In seven or eight minutes, the repair is completed. And the men pick up their tools, get back in the truck, and proceed on their way. There are many miles to cover before sundown. Cactus, brush, and thorns are just something to get around or over with as little effort as possible. The men never bother about cactus thorns in the tires. They just keep right on going as if the thorns were not there. Just as they do, incidentally, to the dry washes and arroyos. Time was when the rancher's wife was too busy to enjoy many of the little comforts of living. Running a family, helping with the chores, preparing the meals, there was little time for anything but work. But times have changed. The rancher's wife today is closer to the rest of the world. With town only day by car where it used to be days or at least hours, the modern rancher's wife lacks few of the advantages of her city sister. Automobiles, the movies, telephone, television, radio, all have made her world smaller and more pleasant. This young rancher's wife is going to town for groceries. And because it's handy, and because Junior has gone over in the other valley with a passenger car, she's taking the power wagon. It's very comfortable, and there's plenty of room in the cab for everybody, including her friend, a neighbor from an adjoining ranch, and the children, not to mention the kitten. A little while ago, we saw this truck being used as a tractor, then as a hauling truck with four tons of hay aboard, then as a carry-all for fence patrol, and here it is again, the same truck, only this time it is a family car, so easy to drive that it's a pleasure for the rancher's wife to use it for a shopping trip to town. We call that versatility. Perhaps you have some other word for it. And here they are at the grocery store. She swings easily into a parking space. This isn't like the old days, but after all, it shouldn't be. This is the middle of the 20th century, and we can expect more machines that'll do more things and serve in more ways and save more money than ever before in our history. This is progress, and the power wagon typifies progress. One of the most important of Mr. Allen's activities has to do with rattlesnakes. They grow big and venomous down here, and rattlers are milked daily at the Institute to obtain poison for the making of life-saving antivenom. It is one of the very sober aspects of Mr. Allen's work. Here we join him and his crew as they go out in this power wagon to hunt snake specimens. This promises to stir the pulse a little.
The power wagon was made for country like this. Rough ground, no roads, small trees, tall brush, palmettos higher than the truck. The vehicle is right at home when the going is tough. And we are glad to be aboard here, too. If this is snake country, we wouldn't want to be walking back to Silver Springs through this stuff. When we arrive in this likely looking area, Ross tells the driver to stop the wagon and the men get out. This is where the hunt begins. And the men, with their special hoop sacks and their strike-proof boots, begin wading through the brushy growth. This is it. Not more than half an hour passes before one of the men calls out. The first find is here, and it's a honey. Not one snake, but two. And here comes the power wagon. Good looking stuff, one of the men observed. No comment from us. Now, come the snakes. Next comes the job of carefully transferring the snakes to sacks for transportation back to the Institute. Some hours later, at the check-in shack, we ask Ross to let us see in detail the milking process. He agrees. We don't know if you'll sleep or not after watching it, but here it is. For a while, he teases the snake on the ground. He says he knows when it will strike, so he raises his foot just on chance the strike might come higher than the top of his boot. This is just under the knee. The boot itself is specially made so a snake's fangs cannot penetrate it. As he picks up the snake, we wonder for a moment if he's going to lose it. That snake is heavy and almost as long as Ross is tall. And then the milking. Those fangs are a full inch long and just like hypodermic needles. Pressure on the poison sacs just back on the snake's throat forces the venom out. It actually squirts. That fellow was really loaded. But somebody's life will be saved anyway. Antivenom is a godsend in the snake country.
We have traveled a lot of miles and seen a lot of things since we left Detroit. The swamps of Florida, the pine forests of Mississippi, the blizzards of Minnesota, the plains of Texas, the blue skies of Arizona, and the floods of the greatest river in North America. We've shown you only that which we ourselves have seen, how a single truck born in the desperation of war is now changing, helping, serving, and improving the lives of people for whom it works. Here, it is helping, and here, help is genuinely, deeply needed. There is humble pride in the faces of the men who make and plan this car in Detroit, a satisfaction in the knowledge that something which they turn out with their own hands and brains can touch and serve the lives of people as this unit does. The car is built to work in difficult places, to do many jobs well, to make possible easier, fuller, and more secure living to bring economical power to people for their own use, and to offer assurance and dependability to those same people when they must call upon some mechanical thing to furnish for them the dependability so urgently requisite when safety is at stake. So, whether it is to fight fire in the pine forest of this good land of America, to bring relief to starving cattle in the snows and blizzards of the freezing north, to carry people to safety from their lonely and flood-ravaged homes along the Mississippi, or whether it is the more ordinary path of serving on the farms, ranches, and rural reaches of America, the power wagon is built to serve. We believe you can count upon it where the need is great, the going tough, and the better living of people, the goal toward which you strive.